what do I what do I wear for this? Do I uh, I don't want to mess up my hair. Do you ever feel like something's off? Like you're in line at the grocery store, you're you're at school, work, or just by yourself, and this overwhelming feeling of wrong hit you. Uh, I could probably fairly confidently say that if you're watching this video, and uh, uh, if I do remember my times tables correctly, it is 2020. You've probably felt like that at some point this year. And if you haven't felt it, well, it's kind of impossible to describe through words. But thankfully, there's a band that does it a little too well. How would you describe the world today? There's the pandemic, rising neo-corporate feudalism, uh, the far right and fascism gaining hold in our institutions, climate change. It all feels pretty pre-apocalyptic. Almost like it's the perfect mix for a tropical fuckstorm. <laughs> And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Because the way TFS operates with their music, it just sends chills into your soul. And I fucking love it. Now, right now, as of yet, they only have two full albums out and a couple of singles and EPs. Uh, and like my Viagra Boys video, I want to tell you, you know, if you don't like this sound, I can't convince you that you're going to like this sound. Uh, it's very niche, but I... Well, I really want to stress how much value there there is in it. So let's start with their first album here, uh, "A Laughing Death in Meat Space." Uh, yeah, okay. So, "A Laughing Death in Meat Space." What the fuck is that even supposed to mean? Well, before you even get into any of their music, the name of their first album sums it up pretty well, and also the album cover, which I how the fuck do you? That's how what it sounds like. In a 2018 interview with The Guardian, frontman for the band Gareth Lydiard talked about what a laughing death in meat space meant. Meat space is what uh, Silicon Valley types kind of call like reality. Like this is cyberspace to you because you're watching me, but like, like this is meat space. Like it just punch whatever's beside you and that's me. Don't punch whatever's beside you. And the laughing death refers to a neurodegenerative disease called Kuru. And this appeared in the four people of Papua New Guinea. So men would eat the muscles of the deceased in this society and women and children would evidently eat the brains. And this would result in a Kritzfeld Jacob disease, which would do some potholing up there and they would lose control of their emotions which would sometimes result in laughing until you're dead so you literally laugh yourself to death so with this horribly twisted way of dying uh cannibalism laughing yourself to death and throwing in the term that silicon valley types use to refer to reality in there in a derisive way connecting the two here I mean, like, the themes are obvious when you look at it like that. It actually makes a lot of sense. But if you just said a laughing death in meat space, that makes no sense. But with the background, horrifying. The song itself continues this grim dichotomy with lines like, I remember when being at home meant not to live or die alone. But now, there's hardly anybody left. The lyrics the band weaves are the strongest evidence in them showcasing how off everything feels. In You Let My Tires Down, they discuss the tale of a woman who robbed a store by crashing her car into it, and then she got caught on candid camera, and then she got arrested, there's a plea bargain on the table, her family's a bunch of losers, uh, and then the song kind of shifts into talking about things that go under the radar, whether this be crime or kind of just weird happenings, before they just start talking about the weather. These things include snorting coke, um, eating your own placenta, and uh, somebody escaping parole, but just barely. I feel like this sounds like a lot of nonsense, and some of it is, and I'm not really describing the music that goes along with it, but... I have a hard time describing the music. Like, the only indicator so far that I've given you is that the album covers look like this. They have weird lyrics. And honestly, how do you expect me to describe this? Okay, not all of their songs sound like that. 
sometimes. But the nonsense really kind of just permeates every tune in one way or another. And a lot of the times, it just straight up sounds like the guitars aren't tuned right. And honestly, I think this works to their benefit because straight up, I don't know if it's out of tune or if they're just fucking with it with whammies and pedals to the point of me not even recognizing what the hell's going on. The music and the lyrics and their unique effect on each other are kind of why I want to bring up this video is because I have not heard such a perfect encapsulation of the loose grip on reality that we all have had this past four years than in Tropical Fuckstorm's music. And honestly, I think it catapults their impact into the stratosphere of creativity. For example, I'll bring up one of my favorite tracks by Tropical Fuckstorm, and that's the intro to the second album, Brain Drops, Paradise. With any other band, this would be a, a little bit of an above-average breakup song, with lines like, I'm way past pretending we ain't more than friends, and this moment is losing its patience. Do you think about me like I think about you, or is that just impossible too? It's powerful imagery, but the song starts off like, sour notes and discordant bass out of tune it sounds like something is definitely wrong hi if the lighting has changed i apologize it's because i had to go out and get batteries it's powerful imagery in the lyrics but are you fucking kidding me and while i was out i thought i would get beer because i wasn't gonna drink this episode <laughs> but i was also not gonna have to go out and get batteries so Today's beer is brought to you by Prince Eddie's Brewing Company, Chin Dropper, Blonde Ale. It's really good. All my Canadian comrades, get it if you can. I once described this song as a noir breakup ballad on acid, and that's kind of what it is. With the guitar lines kind of weaving in and out of the vocals, it does make your head kind of hurt trying to piece it together but it's close, and it complements the themes of the song, which talks about this relationship that is close to working, but something is fundamentally off. It's funny though, no matter how much my brain goes, this song isn't supposed to work, it sounds off, it's wrong, I can't help myself from singing, everything dies and that's the way it's always been. By the end of it, the grip on the song structure starts to slip further and further away as every instrument builds into this cacophonous mess of noise that just keeps getting farther away, but you keep trying to just bring it back to the song. A lot of bands do what is called a big rock ending. One of my favorite bands, ACDC, Yes Really, does this until it's meaningless, just because they think it sounds cool. It, it does. But Tropical Fuckstorm uses this very pointedly. In this song, it's about a relationship that's slipping away from you and a reality that you're, you don't have a grip on. And the song complements that by the end of it just slipping away from the songwriting structure and any semblance of structure that has to it. And it's really nice. This is only the tip of the iceberg, because this album takes a specialty in weaving the absurd with the everyday. From the song The Planet of the Straw Men, about a literal planet of straw men, or people just building straw men to have fights on the internet, to the title track Brain Drops, it is absurd and disturbing, but strangely comforting. In fact, in the song Brain Drops, the protagonist wakes up with his presumed roommates. Uh, it's super bright in there, he realizes he doesn't have any sunglasses, so they all take a walk downtown and buy some. That's all it is. But that's not all it is. The song is funky and off like a lot of their tracks, but this everyday normal activity that they do has a sense of impending doom behind everything they're talking about. If you're wondering who woke up, you woke up. We just have not figured out which you yet. The song itself even breaks into this directly, with the rest of the band singing for the chorus, they remember a time when life was as simple as a glass of water. Nowadays, not so much. There's absurd juxtapositions of fantastical weird things, and things that are in our everyday life. And it kind of brings up, how normal really is this? Lines about crushed skulls of watermelons flowing down drains. And then in the next line, he talks about a homeless person sleeping beneath a four-leaf sign. Soccer moms calling cops on addicts while 
also paying for things they can't afford on credit cards. Everyday women trapped in relationships where they're stuck and they're dead inside because they can't get out. Everyday things, but things that shouldn't be the way that they are. I think the most interesting part of the song comes at the end, when they finally get to the place where they're going to buy those sunglasses. They walk into the place and the guy running it starts talking about flat earth and, and square earth and they kind of brush it off and laugh because what else can you do? And he says, well, we're all living in a simulation anyway, so why don't you buy some knockoff Ray-Bans? Give me money. Braindrops the album has this unsettling reality nailed down really well. And in fact, it even has two songs dedicated to a Maria, which Gareth describes as love songs, Maria 62 and Maria 63. Maria 63 talks about how this person tracked her down in Argentina and talks with her after she and her mother escaped Berlin after World War II. Then as the song develops, it slowly comes to realize that the man is a Nazi hunter and he's come to kill Maria. But Maria in the song is Maria Orsic, the subject of a neo-Nazi conspiracy theory that spread on the internet and is still held by far-right fascists today. She was a witch that taught Hitler how to communicate with aliens. And also, she never existed. Never, no records of her. It's just a batshit insane conspiracy theory. This shit is fucking bananas, but it proves a point. This is just as real to far-right neo-Nazi internet fascists that this lady was a witch who taught Hitler how to communicate with aliens as our everyday life is to us. It's just as real to them, even though there's no fucking basis for it. It's fucking insane. That's really bone-chilling, and that's the note that the album ends on. And not only that, if you didn't know all this, you would think this is just a like a, a metaphor for meeting like someone after the war and Gareth described it as one of the first fake news songs. The sentiment of existential despair and uh, incongruity with reality is further explored on their single Suburbiopia, which first of all is a fucking amazing name, and second of all explores cults and how appealing they really are. Wait, 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 don't go, don't go anywhere. I'll explain, I'll explain. Gareth said of the context of the song, I thought, what if all those nutty cults and their fucked up suicide escape plans weren't wrong, and everybody else accusing them of being insane was wrong? It's timely not because of the cult thing, but because it's probably a good idea to leave the planet. Yeah, that's, a. Uh pretty fair. In the lyrics of the song, TFS speaks about sitting on your luggage in an airport hotel bar, being trapped in the basement, marathoning Fortnite, and locked in a cycle at your methadone clinic where you pee in a cup in the morning and at night your sponsor hounds you for sex. Wouldn't you want to leave? Don't you want to leave right now? Now at this point, I would like to make it clear that Tropical Fuckstorm is pretty left-wing. They're not this left-wing. They think that the left and the right have become far too polarized because of the internet, which, I mean, a fair take to an extent, but I don't think a neo-Nazi witch who taught Hitler to communicate with aliens is the same thing as the cis-heteronormative patriarchy at all. That being said, their politics are usually in the background of their songs. Whether it's the toxic masculine control of Eugene Landy, uh, marketing control over your thoughts, or the CIA's MK Ultra sister project, MK Naomi, where a scientist who was working on it made off with 11 grams of shellfish toxin. It's only there if you go look for it. It's not in the instrumental. So I don't really know what else to say. Tropical Fuckstorm is pretty much the only band that gives me the catharsis of knowing that this fucked up world we live in is fucked up and it's wrong and it feels that way and you should feel like it feels that way. I keep going back to this review that Exclaim put out about brain drops and how accurately it captures the feeling that I have every day and the feeling that Tropical Fuckstorm's music purports as well. Tropical Fuckstorm bring a level of spectacle and nuance, but being poised in the Trump era allows them to explore the Orwellian current day concerns of a spiraling, pre-apocalyptic world. A lot of our media deals with post-apocalyptic scenarios, apocalyptic scenarios, but that word, pre-apocalyptic, it feels more real now than ever. And to get rid of that feeling, buy a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the two words that came up a lot are unpredictable and, and apocalyptic also, seeing those words. Most of the time I can 
tell what's happening next and where I need to cut to. I try to cut like a second before it's going to happen, and I have no idea where to cut here. I have to wait till it happens. I cannot predict what's what's happening in these songs. <laughs>